morning, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to welcome our distinguished guests from Italy and the United States to our symposium. As you know, the subject matter of this meeting is 100 years of Italian democratic socialism, 1892 to 1992. As scholars, we understand the necessity of putting current events in perspective. Italian socialism is uh, currently undergoing a difficult time, but we know that this movement has had a long development. It is our job as scholars not to ignore current events, but to put them into perspective. As the organizer of this conference, and as keeper of all the secrets, since I've, I've had access to all of the papers, I can state that the presenters have fulfilled this important obligation to take an objective and long-term, a long-range look at the history and evolution of an important ideology which, in its various aspects and its influence on other movements, has so affected the course of Italian history. I'd like now to introduce some of, uh, uh, people, some of the people who will be greeting us. One of the joys of preparing this symposium has been the cooperation which I have had from the staff of the John F. Kennedy Library. I wish to thank especially Dr. Sheldon Stern, who has represented the library since the conception of this conference two years ago. As we will learn from Arthur M. Schlesinger, the Kennedy administration had a major role in the evolution of Italy in the 1960s. For those of you interested in this theme, I may state that the Kennedy Library archives are extremely rich and have been only partially exploited. There is still much research left to be done here, and I can testify that the archivists are very efficient and always ready to help. I can also testify that, in my experience at least, this is the most pleasant archive in which to work. Especially, I know it may be difficult to uh, see of this now, but especially during the summer, when you have this beautiful view, but you're in the cool air. John Stewart will extend the library's greetings to the participants. Mr. Stewart has also followed the evolution of this conference since its beginnings. I remember when I first approached him, he immediately gave me his support, not only because of his intense interest in the subject matter, but because his wife was Italian. In fact, you would be amazed to learn how many persons helping in this endeavor have Italian wives or Italian ancestors. But I have to say that he has other merits besides an Italian wife. Mr. Stewart is the library's director of education and has served also as chief of the Oral History Project, which is an important uh, resource for the history of the Kennedy administration. He served as acting director, as chief archivist, and as coordinator of exhibit development and building planning. I give you Mr. Stewart. Thank you, and I am very, very pleased to welcome you to the Kennedy Library. Professor Descala and his uh, committee have organized a splendid conference, and we are very, very proud to be able to contribute, if only in a modest way. Uh, as he mentioned, although I am not a student of Italian politics, I do have a, a deep interest in Italian culture and history. And let me just correct one thing. It's not just that my wife is of Italian heritage, uh, my maternal grandparents uh, came 104 years ago from the town of Gaeta, and uh, where my great-grandfather was a sailmaker. So I have um, a good deal of Italian blood in my veins, and, and uh, so therefore I, ha I do have an interest in the subject, although, as I say, I am not uh, a student of American political, of Italian political history. Unfortunately, uh, you've come to the Kennedy Library at a time when uh, our museum is undergoing a complete renovation, therefore I cannot invite you to... Uh, uh, spend some time uh, watching, looking at the various exhibits. The, your tour of the building this afternoon, I guess, will focus uh, primarily on the archives. And uh, again, as Professor Descala said, we are very, very proud of the materials 
of the collections that are in the archives and of the general atmosphere of that facility. So I hope that if any of you have an interest in uh, studying here and using those materials, uh, you will talk to uh, uh, one of the archivists, and I'm sure they would uh, help you to uh, uh, focus your attention on, on those collections that are of greatest use to you. Uh, in addition to the archives, which are on the upper floors of this building, the uh, Kennedy Library contains, as I mentioned, an extensive museum, uh, a museum on John Kennedy, the presidency, and the history of uh, American politics in the 1960s. It also contains this conference center, uh, which is named uh, for Stephen Smith, who was one of the founders uh, of the Kennedy Library. This conference center is used extensively uh, by the library, uh, the education department that Sheldon Stern and, and I are a part of, and it's also used extensively by many, many other groups in the Boston area and by people at the University of Massachusetts for a whole a variety of meetings and conferences and programs on many different historical and political topics and themes. So again, I extend to all of you my hearty welcome to the Kennedy Library and uh, my hopes for a very, very successful meeting. If there's anything we can do to make your, your stay here more pleasant, please don't hesitate to ask. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. Another person who was extremely instrumental in making this symposium possible is our Chancellor, Sherry Penny. Chancellor Penny gave me great encouragement and a seed grant at a crucial time in the planning of this symposium. That is, at the very beginning, when I was about to drop the whole idea. She has been among the major supporters of this endeavor ever since. I want to stress that Chancellor Penny has energized the university since coming here in 1988. Our institution counts a faculty of 800 and a student body of almost 12,000. It has been dedicated to the schooling of students who otherwise would not have been able to receive a higher education degree. This sense is very uh, similar to Italian institutions. In order to widen the perspectives of the student body, Chancellor Penny has worked to give the university a unique international dimension of which this symposium is part. This effort has also resulted in links with the Japanese University and ongoing attempts to establish permanent connections with British and Italian institutions. Like John Stewart, however, Chancellor Penny has merits which go beyond her support for this conference. She is a professor of American civilization and author of a well-regarded book, Patrician in Politics, Daniel Dewey Bernard of New York, and she has published articles on higher education which have appeared in prestigious journals. Her administrative experience is too vast to mention completely, so I will just touch on some highlights. From 1976 to 1982, she was an associate provost at Yale University. In 1982, until she came to UMass, she became the first female vice chancellor of SUNY, a higher education complex of 64 campuses and 370,000 students. We have been very lucky to have her since then. So I would like to introduce Chancellor Sherry Penny of the University of Massachusetts at Boston. Thank you, Spencer, and a sincere welcome to all of you to this International Conference on Italian Socialism, which is being held by the University of Massachusetts at Boston, our very good friends at the John F. Kennedy Library and Museum, and the Italian Council General in Boston. I've been speaking at the university for five years on collaboration, and this is, I think, one of the best examples of the way we try to work together with other groups in Boston and beyond. It's also most fitting that the city of Boston is the venue for this impressive gathering. It includes a delegation from Italy and speakers throughout the United States. And for the delegates from Italy, we produced this wonderful New England snowstorm. 
And if you're like me and you go out today and try to buy a pair of boots, which I actually did yesterday, there aren't any left, because everybody in Boston thought that spring had arrived. But for you also, we've also produced an Italian mayor. So I think we've gone as far as we can to let you know how much we want to welcome you to the city of Boston. Boston's long association with Italy has been a very, very fruitful one, particularly in the arms and the, in the realm of arts and culture. It was not so many months ago that our Museum of Fine Arts held an exhibition on the lure of Italy, which explored the imagination and productive relationship that existed between American artists and the Italian experience during the 18th, 19th, and 20th centuries. In addition, Boston has been one of the gateways to this continent for immigrants from Italy. In the words of one of our most famous Bostonians, Oliver Wendell Holmes, our country became, in welcoming them from Europe, the Romans of the modern world, the great assimilating people. So the new Romans welcomed those Italians who chose to settle in the New England area, and they, in turn, added vitality and excitement to the Yankee landscape, infusing our society with intellectual excellence and energy, which have stayed us very, very well. While Americans are properly appreciative of Italian culture, we perhaps have less of an understanding of the political side of modern-day Italy. I think that is most unfortunate, because in our increasingly interdependent world, full understanding of each other's culture and history certainly depends on a greater appreciation of how we both govern our countries and what philosophical bases form that government. Thus, the importance of this conference, which has been artfully designed to explore an ideology, socialism, and the impact of that ideology on the fabric of modern Italian life from a multitude of perspectives. Certainly, the socialist movement merits such an extensive examination. It was very important because it helped establish the earliest labor unions in Italy, while at the same time bringing about social change and persuading ordinary people to take part in their country's political life. After World War II, socialism was a strong democratic force in Italy, and during the 60s attracted the attention of the Kennedy administration when it played a prominent role in preventing Italy from tumbling into instability. At the end of the Cold War, the Socialist Party in Italy faces many challenges. Changes are occurring within it and within the political life of Italy that are producing new tensions as well as new opportunities. The conference then being held now, this week, is most timely. There are major changes in the Socialist Party, some of which occurred earlier this week. These changes are reflected in the presence at the conference of the new president of the Socialist Party. So this discourse in the next three days at the Kennedy Library should greatly strengthen understanding in the United States of the Italian political scene. The proceedings also should advance the knowledge of Italian socialism and other important movements. I must assure our visitors from Italy that in spite of some of the things you read about Americans in the news, the American nation is profoundly interested in what's happening elsewhere in the world, particularly in countries such as Italy, which share our democratic ideals. The democracies of Italy and the United States are bound together not only by the ties I have mentioned, but also by a common set of aspirations involving social progress and the betterment of the lives of all. To the conferees, I want to welcome you especially. Your presence here is evidence of my university's desire to broaden its own horizons, to reach out beyond the confines of Boston so that we truly become an international university. My thanks, therefore, to those of you who have come long distances to share with us your thoughts and views at this gathering. My most sincere thanks also to the Italian government, and in particular to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, whose support, both financial and moral, has enabled my fine colleague, Spencer Descala, to present this conference. And an especial vote of thanks must go to the Italian Consul General, Roberto Felici. His interest in the general scheme of the conference and his faith in Professor De Scala, the uncanny ability to put it together, has been most wonderful and devoted. 
So I wish you well in a very significant undertaking, and we promise that the sun will shine and the snow will melt by the time you leave, and you'll also be able to see what Boston is like in the spring. Welcome. Thank you, Chancellor Payne. I know she made a rash uh, judgment there. Um, as most of you who have had experience of this kind before are aware, conferences of this type are subject to many obstacles. We've overcome one this morning. Uh, they're um, subject to changes of programs and many other places. People have sudden changes of plans, money problems arise, and so on. And I can assure you that all of the above happened to this meeting. If you plan a symposium in Boston, you also have to worry about blizzards. And I put in my remarks that we took care of that, but I guess not. This symposium, however, had a particular problem, which I think is unique and which uh, many organizers perhaps have had to face. That is the tendency of the Italian participants to have to cancel because they uh, become members of the government. Thus, Giuliano Amato, who was on the original program, became prime minister and could not come, although I rather suspect that he would have preferred to be in Boston right now, precisely because it is cooler, uh, rather than in Rome. Our keynote speaker, Valdo Spini, became minister for the environment and could not come because he had to deal with crucial issues there. Gino Giugni was elected president of the Socialist Party, and Antonio Landolfi was elected to the directorate. So as a result, they are both coming late, not here today, but one is coming tomorrow and the other is um, one's coming today and one tomorrow. But as if this weren't enough, now the Americans are at it too. Luckily, they are closer at hand. And Mayor Flynn will postpone his trip to Rome long enough to be present uh, at our dinner for the presenters. But one happy aspect of this particular development is that Thomas Menino, District City Councilor and Boston City Council President, who will greet the participants on behalf of the City of Boston, will become acting mayor once Mayor Flynn <coughs> is confirmed as ambassador to, to the Vatican. President Menino has been repeatedly elected with the largest majority in the City District Council elections. As president of the City Council, he initiates ordinances on wide-ranging issues, institutes programs to benefit city residences, and works with private industry, with non-profit organizations, and universities to coordinate resources and efforts. I think this is an excellent curriculum vitae for an acting mayor, and even for a permanent one. So, President Menino, since the symposium seems to increase the political fortunes of his participants, I hope it will bring the best of luck to you in the future. President Menino. Thanks very much, Spencer. I like that aggression of individuals who were supposed to be here and went up to the ladder. Uh, alas, um, I think 36 to 48 hours, <clears throat> my life has changed drastically. I got a call from the mayor at 2.30 on um, Tuesday afternoon, and he says, what are you doing? I said, I'm sitting here thinking about um, the city budget problems. And uh, he says, well, let me just tell you, Tommy, he says, you better go out and buy a couple of new suits. You're going to be the mayor of the city of Boston uh, starting in a couple of weeks. And uh, my life has changed drastically since 2.30. Uh, Tuesday afternoon, I'm trying to put a, a transition team together uh, to make that transition from the Flynn administration to the uh, Menino administration. It's only a short time because we have city elections in uh, September. But like Spencer said, I am the first uh, individual ever to be of Italian extraction to be the uh, acting mayor or the mayor of the city of Boston. I hope to, in November, to make that permanent uh, with a lot of folks' hope, uh, help. I'll do it. Uh, you know, it's a challenge in, in Boston. But let me just say that uh, bringing the city greetings and welcoming to our city. Uh, uh, this is a great city, a city that we're very, Italians have a lot of heritage in here. We've been uh, involved in a lot of the aspects of 
a cultural part of the city, educational part of the city, and living in the city of Boston. I, the north end of the city is really a, a place that you all have to visit if you haven't visited yet. Uh, the schools, the, the, the museums, I mean, we just have a great culture. And I, I understand the uh, aspect of this meeting in the next three days is still study the uh, political climate of Italians. And uh, I just want to ask you to figure out how I'm going to do in September to overcome only being 12% of the population of the city of Boston. Uh, I need another uh, 38% to make it 50%. So I'll need your help in figuring out those aspects. But just let me just say the city of Boston is really happy to have you here. Uh, we'll do anything we can to accommodate you. Uh, the sun will be out. The sun is out right now, uh, Spencer. And the temperatures will go up about 20 or 30 degrees in the next couple of days. And we have a nice visit in Boston. Or anything that the city administration can do to make this a more enjoyable conference, uh, we're, we're there to assist you. But I wish I could stay with you and listen to some of the dialogue that will go over the next three days. And if I have some time on my schedule, I will drop back in the next two or three days to listen. Because uh, to me, uh, being born in America and um, my family, uh, my grandparents being born in Italy, you know, I lost a lot of the heritage of my ancestry, and I, I want to learn more about it. And I find in America, when uh, when you're Italian, I went to uh, parochial schools, and I can tell you, it's a sad story. I went to a school that wasn't an Italian school, it was basically another ethnic group, and uh, the nuns in the school told me that um, they spelled my name the first year in school, M-E-N-N-I-N-O, two N's. And they told me, uh, your name is spelled wrong, Tommy. Uh, my, my name is spelled M-E-N-I-N-O. The nun said, well, you have two N's before the I. And they said, uh, no, uh, sister, my name is spelled M-E-N-I-N-O. And they uh, said to me, your mother, your mother and father don't know how to spell your name. So I went through my whole first year being discriminated against because I think I was Italian. They thought my family didn't speak English or anything like that. So I understand some of the problems we have with the being of another ethnic group coming to a country. So I just want to congratulate you on anything we can do to help you out. I really appreciate we'll be there to help you. And uh, we've got a great university here helping, the University of Mass Boston. The uh, chancellor is a wonderful person who's really made, brought this university uh, beyond what anybody could have expected in the past. So congratulations and good luck. Thank you. Thank you, uh, President Menino. I, I was going to say that you have a lot of political talent in the audience, and I think that's useful. Oh, well, you have any campaign manager for uh, <laughs> fundraisers? A lot of them. Huh. I'll take that. Yeah, take names. I need a million dollars by September. Thanks a lot, Thank uh, President Menino. Um, I've been in Boston for over 20 years. During this time, I've, <coughs> I've had a lot of <coughs> I've had contact with a number of consuls general from Italy. I can therefore testify that the city and Italy are very lucky indeed to have Roberto Falaschi as the Italian representative in Boston. Consul General Falaschi is an extremely active and energetic person, as well as a cultured one. I could uh, tell you a lot of stories about how we work together in the conference, but uh, that would take a long time. He has been a constant and strong supporter of this symposium from the very beginning. But I must say that he has really come into his own during the last phases of the planning. I could go into a few of the crises we've confronted together, but as I've already mentioned, perhaps that would take more than the 100-year period than the symposium is supposed to cover. So without more ado, I, will, I would like to introduce to you Council General Roberto Falaschi. Thank you, thank you. I think we, uh, we had all the greetings in English, and I will apologize, but I would like to say a few words in Italian first, a few remarks, then I will translate them in English briefly. Desidero innanzitutto complimentarmi all'Università del Massachusetts per lo sforzo e l'impegno che ha dedicato nell'organizzare questo simposio di 100 anni di socialismo democratico in Italia. Ho potuto constatare personalmente quanto gli organizzatori si siano dovuti sacrificare 
e quante difficoltà di ogni genere abbiano dovuto superare per concretizzare questi tre giorni di studio. Naturalmente il ringraziamento va rivolto anche alle JFK Library per aver messo a disposizione la propria organizzazione e competenza. Infine mi è gradito dare il benvenuto ai partecipanti e ringraziarli per la loro presenza, elemento essenziale per il sicuro successo dei prossimi lavori. Quale italiano nel New England e in particolare quale console generale d'Italia non posso che applaudire uno studio che porti ad una conoscenza reale e precisa dell'Italia e della sua struttura, in un paese dove per una serie di motivi non si percepisce il mio paese per quello che in effetti è, ma è noto soprattutto per mezzo di immagini stereotipate. Poche persone, anche tra la collettività italiana ed italo-americana, hanno una conoscenza della realtà nazionale italiana sia sul piano sociale che istituzionale ed economico. Penso quindi che i risultati di questo simposio, una volta pubblicati, potranno contribuire all'eliminazione di una grave lacuna conoscitiva nei confronti dell'Italia. D'altra parte, la partecipazione degli italiani allo sviluppo culturale ed economico degli Stati Uniti è purtroppo sconosciuta in questo Paese come in Italia e, forse, mi sentirei di suggerire per il futuro un simposio su questo argomento. Ancora non abbiamo cominciato questo, già si parla di un altro. Per rimanere nel tema di questi lavori e senza entrare specificamente nella materia, mi sembra evidente che questo secolo sia stato un secolo delle ideologie, vuoi di destra, vuoi di sinistra, ma per avere anche in mente queste ultime. Per anni siamo vissuti nel secolo delle ideologie, che per la loro natura così pregnante hanno finito per diventare estremiste, snaturando spesso quanto di buono vi era nell'idea originaria. E l'Italia, da quando esiste come Stato unitario, ha costantemente vissuto questa tensione. Oggi si è venuto a creare inaspettatamente e repentinamente un vuoto ideologico, proprio in quelle società totalitarie che si definivano socialiste pur avendone perso l'essenza vera. E ciò è tanto più sorprendente se si pensa che per anni hanno preconizzato la caduta per autodistruzione del sistema capitalistico o economia di mercato. Il socialismo che ci interessa in questo seminario, in quanto democratico, non è stato fuorviato da questi estremismi e lo studio che ci apprestiamo a fare di questi cento anni di socialismo democratico in Italia si annuncia in questo periodo decisamente accattivante ed intellettualmente provocante. Auguro quindi a tutti i convenuti un buon lavoro. Well, I, uh, I thank all the people that contributed to the uh, event, uh, especially the uh, University of Massachusetts and uh, the JFK Library. And I think that this study will be extremely useful in uh, making uh, Italy better known in this country, especially some of its aspects, which are not much known. But I think that there is some sort of lack of knowledge in both countries of the other one, in spite of all the... Uh, things we have in common, in studying from institutions and way of life and so on. And this study not only will contribute to this, but maybe will be the start of other studies, like what the Italians have done in the United States, that will allow us to know each other a lot more. This century has been a century of ideological passion whether they were right ones, I mean, from the right or from the left, but especially from the left. In, um, in some countries, this uh, socialism has degenerated into a sort of political uh, dictatorship which has uh, preconized the destruction of the uh, market economy society Well, they were wrong, as experience has told us, but here we are to discuss a different kind of socialism, the uh, democratic one, which we had in Italy for a hundred years. And I think that in this period, this is a especially interesting subject, and so uh, I wish everybody 
good work and study. And I would like personally to thank you persons that have worked with me or I have worked with them to solve the so many problems we have. But some of the problems, I must say, were Spencer's fault because he chose people to come in this seminar that were so good that we got them in the government or we promoted them. <laughs> so uh, thank you very much. Thank you for, uh, if I may call you so, Mayor, for being here. And I hope we will see you in this uh, next days uh, very often. That would be a, not only a pleasure, but also an honor to have you here with us. And thank you to the Chancellor of the UMass and uh, also to the Director of the Education of the JFK. I think uh, we will do a good job all together. Thank you. Also, General reminded me about uh, the importance of uh, yesterday, which, as you all know, was um, March 17th. You might keep this in mind. March 17th um, is that yesterday was the 132nd anniversary of the unification of Italy. So I just thought I would uh, throw that in. Thank you very much, um, Council General. I've already uh, mentioned to you that Valdo Spini was unable to come. Um, because of his new duties as Minister of the Environment. Um, he has, however, sent us a message, and I would like to read the message now. Caro Spencer, sono impossibilitato ad intervenire al convegno per impegni inderogabili connessi al mio nuovo incarico di Minister per l'Ambiente. Me ne dispiace veramente molto. Tengo veramente ad esprimerti tutto il mio apprezzamento per l'iniziativa che hai così intelligentemente organizzata. I will try to translate that into English. La storia del più antico dei partiti politici italiani rappresenta un capitolo importante della storia d'Italia per molti versi strettamente intrecciata con la storia degli Stati Uniti d'America. Il socialismo italiano ai suoi albori seppe fare di una plebe disorganizzata un popolo orgoglioso dei suoi diritti. Successivamente seppe mantenere la fedeltà ai suoi ideali durante il fascismo per ripresentarsi alla ribalta della Repubblica Democratica. Successivamente, con il centro-sinistra, avviò una nuova stagione di modernizzazione e di riforme mentre negli anni Ottanta si dimostrò capace di sviluppare una intensa iniziativa internazionale dell'Italia. Nel momento attuale, il Partito Socialista Italiano soffre il travaglio di un rinnovamento, profondo ma necessario. Si tratta di rendere il Partito Socialista protagonista del passaggio ad un nuovo sistema istituzionale ed elettorale, ad un nuovo modo di fare politica, riproducendo i valori di libertà, di solidarietà, di riformismo laico e vigoroso, per i quali, per i quali si è affermato e ha tracciato un solco così importante nella storia d'Italia. Vi, ass vi assicuro che dedicherò la dovuta attenzione agli atti di un così importante convegno e ti prego di formulare il mio saluto e il mio augurio a tutti gli illustri relatori, cordialmente Valdo Spini. That's the um, message from uh, Valdo Spini. Uh, we've come to the end of our greetings. I know that the greeters have important schedules, and I would like to thank you very much, and we hope to see you uh, during the, the work of the symposium. Thank you. We're very lucky, actually, to 
have uh, with us, substituting for his son, Giorgio Spini, professor of the University of Florence. As an active member of the resistance against fascism, Giorgio Spini took the pseudonym Valdo Gili, which is, in case you were wondering, how Valdo Spini got his name. So, in a, span, in a sense, Valdo Spini is here with us. Giorgio Spini is a longtime member of the Socialist Party and has served at its highest level. He was a friend of Gaetano Saldemini's, about whom we will hear, and for times succeeded him at Harvard. He is the author of numerous scholarly books, but is most famous for his textbook on which generations of Italian students have been nurtured. In Italy, people refer to Giorgio Spini, Giorgio Spini's book as simply Lo Spini, that is, Da Spini, I studied on Da Spini. And in fact, when I introduce him uh, to my Italian friends, they always say, I studied on your text, uh, with your textbook. And he always answers, I wanted to show you that I'm not a book, that I exist in flesh and blood. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce you to you in the flesh our keynote speaker, Giorgio Spini. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> I hope you'll sympathize with my difficult position because here you expect to listen a prominent young statesman and now you find yourself confronted by an old professor and probably you are deeply disappointed. I don't know that. That makes me remember the story of my faraway youth, the days of the resistance. <laughs> uh, I happened to cross the German lines with a party of men of the resistance, and I entered into the American lines. One of my men uh, suffered of an old wound, so I looked around to find if there was a medical officer to ask him to help my friend. And I spotted a man with a helmet with an insignia which I mistook for a red cross. And I asked him, begged him to help my friend. And he laughed. He said, oh, Sonny, at that time I was younger. Sonny, matter of fact, I'm not a doctor, a doctor. I'm a veterinary. But I will do the best, <laughs> the best I can for your friend. And that will always be better than nothing. So I'm not the, 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 the doctor, I'm the veteran. I'll do my, the best I can. Uh, um, now, some words about the course, two days course of Italian socialism. Because I heard uh, the letter that uh, Spencer read now that Valdo outlined the course of democratic socialism in the past. Let me add some words concerning the present. It seems to me uh, that we are living today a turn in uh, history, a, a deciding turn of a plan on a planetary scale, indeed. The 1989 revolution, the downfall of the Soviet Union, the end of the communist government, are but the most 
conspicuous aspect of this change we are undergoing. But we must not forget that in the years precedent the 1989 revolution, we had the downfall of all the last fascist governments and military dictatorships in South America, in Latin America. We must not undervalue the importance of the change which was brought here in the United States by the end of the Reagan and Bush administrations and the beginning of the new Clinton administration. And uh, so it would be indeed odd if only Italy would not be, would be free from the effect of this wave of change, this revolutionary wave, and if the cause of Italian socialists would be influenced deeply. The end of the Cold War has been certainly a turning point in the history of our times. But perhaps what now we what what now is closing is not only the forty year period or the year period of the Cold War. We are probably at the end of an age whose beginning was more than seventy years ago. The beginning was with the mass murders, with the horrors of the First World War. <clears throat> when all the most advanced and civilized countries used of the instruments of civilization the most perfect instrument of science and, and progress for a mass extermination never which the world has never seen the equivalent before. This was a sort of mortal sin of the Western civilization. In fact, an horrible civil war among civilized countries. This mortal sin of Western civilization was paid bitterly with more than 70 years of convulsions. The world, First World War looked as if it confirmed Lenin's doctrine on imperialism. You remember, huh? the last stage of capitalism, which brought inevitably to imperialistic war. And so, the Leninist revolution was made irresistible. Later, the counter-revolution, the fascist counter-revolution came. And then Nazi, and then Second World War, and then the Holocaust, and then the Cold War. But the origin of it all is in 1914. We are now at the closing of this era of 
blood and of horror. Seventy years. It's a biblical number, isn't it? It has a certain fascination. Probably we are at the end of the captivity of the seventy years, of the seventy years captivity. We may hope that the punishment on Western civilization be extended and that a new age is opening before us. That is our hope. Change in Italy assumed in this last year, this last month, aspects which look hardly understandable and surely leave us disoriented and fearful. Less understandable, less clear than in other countries. It's entirely clear in the United States the passing from a Republican from Republican administrations to a democratic one. There is nothing particularly tragic in that. Relatively clear is the passage in France from a Mitterrand era to probably a time dominated by center-right party. And in case one day England would pass from the conservative party to the liberal party, it wouldn't be anything surprising. But in Italy, a wide section of the citizenship of the citizen looks as if it had a new mode of down with the parties, a basso i partiti, or a basso la partitocrazia. The change arrived with a dark cloud of financial and political scandals, especially the Christian Democratic Party and the Italian Socialist Party are hit by these scandals. The change is surrounded by a cloud of confusion. Until now, our country has been governed by a coalition of parties which proclaimed that they were in power in order to repel the communist or perhaps the fascist. And at the same time, these parties pretended that they were engaged in ushering uh, out the traditional difference between the rich north and the poor south of the peninsula. It is understandable, it, although it is also unquieting, the fact that today heirs of communism or heirs of fascism or more simply defenders of the traditional privilege of the North present themselves as the raising forces, the raising stars of Italian politics. And that is also understandable, it's unquieting, the fact that they raise that battle cry, cry down with the party, which was, after all, you remember, the same battle cry of Mussolini's fascists. Eh? The problem is now what is or what can become the course of the Italian socialism in this new and, and highly preoccupying situation. 
I um, arrived here after I attended uh, the last session of the so-called party assembly in uh, Rome. And uh, it seems to me there are other members of this audience who have been with me in that conference. I would be only too glad to listen to their uh, comments or maybe objections. It seemed to me that it was clear the will of the Italian socialists, first of all, to put in order their own house, to clean their own house. Of course, there were differences of opinion uh, between a, a, a wing which was more preoccupied of continuity, and this wing had his, its leader, the present state party secretary, Giorgio Benvenuto. On the other side, a wing which was more preoccupied of the breath with the past and of a class change. And this wing had its leader, exactly how the wing. <laughs> <coughs> um, but not only that, it was not only a question of cleaning the, of cleaning the house. It was, of course, a question of reorganization of the party. Well, the party is going to have a period of reorganization which uh, will lead to a new national congress, so probably before this year ends. And at the same time, all the instruments of Italian politics are changing because we all expect a new electoral law which should change the rules of the game. Probably it's expected that the present system of of many parties will be replaced by a system of two or three parties at the most. And from the proportional system of voting, we'll go toward something more like the French or the German system. Someone thinks of the English system, but it seems that is, that is uh, less probable. So, the Italian Socialist Party will have a conference and will prepare itself to a new stage of political history in uh, Italy with, new with a new organization and new instrument. But not all that. That is not all. I realized that if there was in the air a quest for a new program, and that this quest for a new program was uh, felt, or I would say, embodied by both the two most prominent men I mentioned, both the radical wing of Valdo and the moderate wing of Benvenuto, agreed on the fact that there was the need of a re-examination of the whole your program, especially from the point of view of economic, fiscal, social programs, health problems, school, and so on. Because we cannot enter into a new world, into a new period of history, with an old baggage of ideas, with the same uh, common places which were repeated 20 or 30 years ago. Or 30 years ago. So, uh, there will be probably the need of a mobilization, no more of the body, but of the brain. <laughs> a, a, a mobilization of talent, 
probably not only uh, those talents which can be found inside the ranks of the party, but probably also outside. Now, uh, here we are in, uh, in front of an audience of historians, students of history. Well, let me say, I would advise, keep your eyes open on that side of the Italian question. Because it's inevitable that the press or mass media, television, tend to fill our eyes or ears with the stories, with the stories of uh, corruption of the former ministers uh, in, who has to undergo a trial and so on and so on. That is true, that's important. The change of the political personnel of the party leadership is important. But it's not all. It's the future history of Italian socialism, let me say frankly, the whole history of Italy, will be decided by the bright new ideas, if it is possible, the bright new ideas which will be, which will mature during this next month. We are living in a, in a time of terrible confusion, not only in Italy. We have a desperate need of clear ideas, of new perspectives. That is, that shall be the central work of Italian socialism. That will be the main core, in my opinion, of course, the main core of Italian socialism in the months and years ahead of us. That is at least my personal conviction. Of course, I'm not infallible, I've not been yet elected for in this and so I don't have the privilege of infallibility. It would be very nice to have a Methodist Pope, but unfortunately I haven't been elected. Thank you, Professor Spini. I think you uh, wielded a fine scaffold um, on the problems of uh, Italy now and uh, what will, is likely to be going on. Thank you very much for it. I think it's particularly fitting that we begin the um, more traditional work of the symposium with a subject that really hasn't been mentioned yet, that is the relationship between the United States and Italy. And of course, we can't do everything, as, uh, as we know in the symposium, but um, this is a particularly good setting, I think, to uh, both the library and Boston is a particularly good setting to uh, begin discussion of the relationship between the United States and Italy. And you notice that the first panel is called a difficult relationship. I think one of the problems um, that we have uh, with the press and so on, break? Okay. Uh, we're going to have a break in as soon as I finish my sentence. 